So I, I was invited to help uh, the district in this equity work that it's, it's undertaking and uh, I'm really impressed by the commitment I see here and it is important because whenever we're in a place where, especially where we're serving large numbers of disadvantaged kids, kids who are disadvantaged by poverty or for you know, circumstances related to um, just the political climate we're in now, uh, it's so important that schools step up to meet the needs and respond so that the kids still get the education they need to help themselves and help their families. And so uh, I'm really impressed with what Sweetwater is doing. I'm happy to be here to, to support that work and I'm really impressed with the leadership. I know this district's gone through a lot of difficulty with leadership, so it's good to see it on strong footing now. So I like to point out to examples, uh, real concrete examples, places people could go to to see it because sometimes people have not seen high performance in, in all kinds of communities don't necessarily believe it can be done. Um, and when you go to those places, you start to see the ingredients are things that we sh almost take for granted that should be in place. But a lot of times we t we're not focused on them. You know, things like whether or not teachers have guidance and support around instruction, whether or not parents are involved, whether or not the culture is affirming of students. Uh, and when those ingredients are in place, uh, what we see is equity is possible. It's not just a slogan, it's, it's real. We see kids who are able to rise beyond the circumstances and we see excellence accessible for more students. And that's what we're after. So what we know is that when left on their own, schools really just reproduce inequality. Right? That is, the, the strongest predictor for how well a student will do in school or in college is how much money the family earns or how much education the parents had. And that is, should disturb all of us because we know there are talented kids who don't have much money and who, whose parents haven't had education. I was one of those kids. And so I shared that with the staff to remind them that's what makes this work powerful. When we use education to make a difference in the lives of kids, we actually work toward creating a more equitable and just society. So that's what I think it's so important for people to remember is that it does take a very intentional focus on equity of knowing our kids and then meeting all those needs, the academic as well as the emotional and psychological needs of a student. Well, uh, two things I would say, I mean, of the many things I've said so far, is one is the relationships are so important. Relationships with kids, because kids uh, need to know the adults care about them. They work, kids will learn from teachers they don't care about them and they will choose not to learn from teachers that don't. And so it's on the adult to build that relationship. But those relationships also have to extend with your colleagues. You have to learn how to work with your colleagues and to be a good collaborator, a good uh, a professional colleague. Um, and then relations with parents, so key. So relationships, are the essence of education. But then on top of that, we have to be able to have honest conversations with each other about what we're doing. When we see things that are not right, when we see children not being treated properly, when we see people not bringing their A-game to work, we've got to find a way to be able to call it out and talk respectfully, not about being big for them, but lifting them up and reminding, this is what we're here for, this is what we signed up for. And I think if you can do that, if you can create that kind of culture of excellence in the district, great things are possible.